Okay, so after Sargon and the guy, I can't remember his name. <coughs> uh, who's the guy? The who's, um the uh, who Sargon had the um ridiculous four hour uh hangout with before Compu the, uh computer. What's his name? Computing forever was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've watched in the last two weeks. Everyone try to give their best analysis uh, to it. A lot of it was really cringeworthy, just not to the point. And today I, I found a guy who is worth, was, at least, you know, not his points, but his counterclaims to Sargon's horrible points. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I found that the, um, the ridiculous reactions and stuff have been because these are two sort of giants of the, uh, yeah. I don't know, at, uh, right wing nubosphere on YouTube and so they don't want to sort of come down on one side or the other so they've been pansying around it's been really pathetic yeah the guy I was trying to say his name is Nick Martinez I have never watched any of his videos I know he comments on my stuff a lot this is the okay. only video I've actually found of his that I've watched and I feel like he did the best job out of everyone on the right analyzing the Sargon debacle or drama recently okay. we're just okay. going Let's let's have a look at Mr. Martinez. The fact that that's his icon already annoys me. I mean, look at it. Okay, so let's go. Of a cad, I am genuinely disappointed that I have to make this video in the first place. If you have not yet heard, anti-feminist YouTuber Sargon of Akkad went on this live stream held by Computing Forever that was supposed to be about male performance and education and pretty much hijacked the stream to explain why he believes it is necessary to impose left-wing economic policy in order to appease the lower classes and prevent some sort of, I don't know, proletarian revolution. Once Computing took back his stream, Sargon decided to leave. The two have engaged in a back and forth since then. But I was genuinely shocked at the, I mean, with all of this empirical evidence against everything that he's arguing, uh, that that Sargon would take this position in the first place. Uh, genuinely. Hang on, is he surprised that Sargon is using an, I don't know, an unsourced claim or something? Is that a surprise to him? Let's okay, have a yeah. Look. You institute a price floor above market equilibrium, creating a surplus of labor. Lots of people want jobs, but few people are willing to actually hire those people. This will destroy youth unemployment as well. Increasing competition for low-skilled jobs will do nothing to improve the economy. Of course, this is also a major supply shock, so the purchasing power for those that are fortunate enough to actually retain their jobs is going to fall like a rock. The only options... For businessmen is this is uh, this is bullshit by the way because actually yeah, 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 I'm I'm tr I'm not trying to stop it because I want to see where he goes with it because I'm trying to like not like cut him off. Well, I am I am going to cut him off because I uh, we can tell from the British experience that what he's just said is a lie because we yeah. we only introduced a minimum wage in what the late nineties here in Britain and yeah. it had no such effect on the economy. It was bollocks. All the all I, the I, right wing I, the right wing fear machine said exactly the same shit that he is saying and it didn't yeah. happen. Well, um, I can take uh, New York, New Jersey, and Massachusetts are the only three states in the U.S. that has a, a I think a twenty-four dollar minimum wage at minimum. Right. And our economies have not crashed at all. When uh, um, states that don't have it are the ones that actually go bankrupt. Yeah, I'm, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. Just to either cut corners on production decrease product quality, increase the prices of their products, or to outsource the jobs and even fire the workers. And okay, so the jobs he's talking about are already outsourced. So, what's I gonna, uh... Not just that, but aren't these exactly the same fucking people who make the argument that, uh, you know, Colin Kaepernick should be proud of the country, blah, blah, blah. But it's okay, they see it's absolutely fine for private companies to shit all over the country and its workers. Fuck these people, they're hypocritical dickwads. I also want. Uh, I um, also wanted to pick up on the fact that um, um, his idea of uh, 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 what do you call ex uh, what, what do you call it, uh, when they move workers overseas? Uh, I, I'm bringing more for uh, ex Out, outsource outsourcing job. Yeah, I, I was I was thinking exporting. I, I don't know why. Exporting. Yeah, okay. yeah when they outsource uh, employees.
they already estimated uh, the. I think it was the Wall Street Journal and the Business Insider already estimated that like ninety three percent of the jobs that are outsourced um, are not ever coming back like to the West ever. Probably yeah, just because financially it doesn't make sense to do so. Yeah, and, uh, that's, why they also nonsense, that's why it's a nonsense for for Trump to suggest that he could do that because how can it's you? also. Uh, yeah, it's also predicted that those jobs that are being outsourced are also be, going to be shrinking in those countries as well, too, in the future. Because those countries from the outsourcing being built up, like our country is also being built up, having an economic bubble. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. But I, I'll have to, that's to a degree conjecture, but yes, that, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh. We need to close their business altogether if it becomes no longer possible to survive in the market. This is asking for an entrapment and a cycle of dependence and poverty. A meta-analysis from minimum wage studies showed that... No, it is no bollocks, right? Bo no, bollocks, bollocks, bollocks. Fucking dependency. These people are working full-time jobs, you yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. prick. They're not being given a handout, you fucking cunt. Well, would you remember a lot of like the AMCABs in his school, um, like he, this guy uh, uh, told me once that he doesn't, he's not like, he is an AMCAP, but he's not like the volunteer's AMCAP. He's a wig and cap, which I don't know what the fucking difference is. I'm sure someone on the right does, but I don't care to know. Yeah, uh, well, he's, he's a pretentious dickhead, is what I can tell. But yeah. Um, and for what I've known that the um from uh the arguments made by wig wig quote unquote volunteer um and caps versus uh, volunteers and caps. Wig uh, and caps. Um, I, I don't know if he is, but I know he said he was in one of his hangouts a few months ago. I don't know if he's okay. still a, a lot of and caps claim that um that jobs itself are collectivized because if you have a corporative or even a private entity that has more than three people, it's automatically socialist by its definition of being a collective. So it has to be not, it's not it's not it's real capitalism. It has to be true to individuals serving another person. Well, that's that is the stupidest piece of shit I've ever heard. That's the dumbest yeah. nonsense. I don't I don't even know. That's beneath refutation. Exactly. Is poor yeah. argument. Showed any positive indications of the minimum wage working at all? And basic a priori reasoning can demonstrate that it's probably that the eight that did work probably only occurred due to external factors. Next up is the. Uh, but well, that's that's the thing. They always have to lock all religious nuts, and the ANCAPs yeah. are a religion as much as anyone else. Yeah, totally. Um, they have, they have to find a reason why the thing they said would happen didn't happen. So it's always, yeah. oh, it's external factors. It's not that actually their whole fucking outlook on life is a pile of shite. No, they couldn't possibly accept that. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I agree. Uh, now, but this is um, the second claim Sargon made to the afternoon minimum wage. The, the way how he's breaking this video down is the way how Sargon broke down his points on um, Computer for uh, Forever's uh, stream. So like, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you'll, you'll see as you go on. Yes, the middle class has become smaller, but not in the way that you would think. America has had a shrinking middle class since about the 1970s. I wonder it, why. Ronald Reagan. I was about to say, it's interesting that that's the case, given that before the 1970s, the tax rate was massively higher than it is now. I know. So in order to raise the, uh, the, uh, the middle class, we need to go back to, what, a 70% tax rate? Pretty much. That would be good. Yeah, okay. So, uh, people were entering a higher income category, not a lower income one. The share of American families earning incomes above $75,000 has more than doubled from 16.3% to 39.1% just since 1967. Well, okay, so, but also uh, the rate of the dollar is worth more than it was back then in the pound, in euro. Well, the euro, obviously, is because it didn't exist, but yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the, the euro existed in 1960, it was made, but it wasn't in every country. I... Okay, okay, yeah. Of course, there's wealth redistribution. Likely, the best way to explain the failure of wealth redistribution could be to take the entire GDP of Europe in the year 1870. Uh, this is a little bit of an argument. I, I actually looked at what this, this argument came from, uh, taking the GDP of uh, Europe from 1850. That literally was an argument Molyneux put out of his ass. <laughs> of course it is. But again, just like all religions, they've got their preachers, yeah. and their preachers can't be wrong. After Marx wrote *Das Kapital* and take take the entire GDP of the European continent and redistribute it 42 times over from the rich to the poor since LBJ began the war on poverty. 
seriously, if you were to tell a socialist in the year 1870 that we would manage to pull something like that off, which we actually did do, there would be zero doubts that poverty would be eliminated. However, just the opposite happened. Since the war on poverty began and this wealth redistribution occurred, the poverty rate slowed its linear decline that existed up until about 1965, and about five years later, the decline had not only slowed, but stopped, and it began to rise back up again until Obama's first term, after Obama's first term, when it had risen to a grand total of 15%, so that's 3%. So again, so, so again you're making a very solid case for massive raises in the top rate of tax. Exactly. And I, I don't think he's aware of it, or maybe he's being really manipulative. I, I can't tell. Yeah, I, I mean, it's difficult to tell whether they're this stupid or this corrupt. It's difficult to know, but he's one, he's one or the other. Because a lot of libertarians in AMCAP, by fault definition, use their uh, form of economics as fraud itself as definition. Yeah. Oh, so we can do 70s. Also, extra taxes won't do a whole lot since Hauser's Law has shown that the overall tax revenue of the U.S. will always wind up being about 19.5% of GDP, regardless of fluctuations in the federal marginal tax rate. Okay, okay I'm going to stop there. Gonna stop. Um, I've, I've looked into it. Like Tax haven countries in Europe, like Monaco, um, uh, Luxembourg, um, and other smaller ones, yeah. and, um, their GDP is big, but compared to other industrial countries, that um, it's theirs are like in the EU are bigger than their uh, per se tax haven society. Yeah. So um, I, I always wondered like, why do these people never bring into consideration the argument of like tax havens? Like, like they do, but not the ones that exist from a state itself. Yeah, and not just that, but why again? Uh, I'm not necessarily saying him particularly, but they try and make the yeah. economic nationalist argument in a number of cases, or try and claim that people aren't being patriotic, blah, 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 but it's okay when millionaires shift huge yeah. sums of money in order to avoid funding the society that we're supposed to be proud of? Uh, I don't know. It, it, it's, I, by definition, fault, that is, it's, it's the idea of fraud, of don't initiate force, The not like taxation is theft, it's violence against me argument. Yeah. Yeah, so um, let me continue this. Distribution is just an absolute terrible idea if you look at the data. Of course, there's also Sargon's gripes with wealth inequality. Start off by quoting a EI. Most working Americans who initially, who were initially in the bottom 20% of income earners rise out of that bottom 20%. Most of them end up in the top 20%, then remain in the bottom 20%. People who were initially in the bottom 20% in incomes have the highest rate of increase in their incomes, while those who were initially in the top 20% have the lowest. This is... Direct. This quote actually is from Sargon's video in reply to Eric a few months ago. Remember? Did he say it was from the AEI? Yeah, it was, no, it was, it was from the AEI, but Sargon quoted it for his video for about to, in reply to Eric. Well, what a fucking surprise. Sargon's quoting the American Enterprise Institute again. Yeah. Brilliant. Opposite of the pattern found when following income brackets over time rather than following individual people. Most data on income inequality, if you're not aware, is totally nonsense. Since it net worth people groups over time. Still there? Hello? You're breaking up. Yeah, okay. Give me a second. Here we go. Is it better? Yeah. Is it better? Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Here's that. And why is this net worth so negative? For example, if you're a college student working in law school, accumulating debt from student loans, it will massively tip the scale despite the fact that as a lawyer, you will make extreme totals of money compared to most people. But people with negative net worths, i.e. college students with large totals of student loans, have uh, they've got negative net worths. That's a lower home. Most of these people don't understand that. Most of the people that play money in don't understand that it's already high levels of tax. Yeah, yeah, we do, but they, they, they do. They fucking go to Panama. They like hide it, like their taxes. Also, this argument on the right and also on the left about student debt loan. Um, I, I don't know why no one brings this up into consideration, of, like how to avoid debt. It just go to a state funded school. If you if you like, don't want to have like masses and trillions of dollars of debt later on in the future. Yeah. Yeah, well, absolutely, I'm with you there. 
But like I say, he was making the argument a second ago that poverty was going down enormously when tax rates were, you know, double what they are. <laughs> It's it's very it's very interesting. I've noticed that, like people on the far right, the uh, projections. Yeah, also on the far left, but like like it's easier to see the projection of like the flaws of people's arguments through the screen than like on YouTube or like Twitter than it is like in person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, let me continue. Top one percent account for about eighteen point seven percent of. GI, yet they pay thirty five point one percent of all taxes. The top five percent account for thirty three point. 9% of the gross income and pay 56.5% of all income taxes. And the top 10% have about 45.4% of the gross income and pay 68.3% of all income taxes. As of right now, the rich pay more than their fair share. In theory, they do, but on paper, they do, but in reality, they don't. Yeah, I think that the hiding of earnings and stuff would suggest yeah, that they don't, but yeah. Wealth inequality is not what you think it is. Capitalism has increased the living conditions of the working class more than anything else in human history. Propagation. Yeah, okay. Not, yeah. This is the, no, no. This is the thing. This is bullshit. If you're an ANCAP, you don't believe that capitalism as you want it or you believe it to be yeah, ever no, existed. But, yeah. but I'm coming what, from you, you, you. You'll attack it and say it's corporatism when it doesn't suit you. But when you want to make this argument, oh, it's capitalism, even though actually for the most part it's been state-assisted capitalism, yeah, that's corporatism. What um, I want to add on that. Um, oh, yes, you said when the capitalism uh, helped people in the working class rise up, but it also a lot of the jobs that it's helping are incredibly just like horrible jobs in general. Well, yeah, they say this. Oh, it's it's done miracles in China. A, that's definitely corporatism. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And secondly, they've had to put up suicide nets outside build outside uh, factories. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So rather than trying to increase the conditions so people don't want to kill themselves, they just want to scoop up the fucking suicide attemptees yeah. and put them back on the fucking production line. It's Pretty disgusting. much. So it's like this is not doing anything good for the working class. It's led to mainstream massive wealth um, welfare states that have made it more profitable to take welfare than to work in 35 American states. That's not exactly going to be helping anybody out of poverty, is it? Now, Sargon well, how about, how about if you increase the minimum wage to the point where it's not more profitable to stay on welfare? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, just, this, just a thought. This is interesting. The claim here, he's replying to Sargon. Sargon actually, in the stream, when I'm watching it, this particular claim is not an AMCAP argument. It's not a left wing argument. It's an alt-right argument. Yeah, well, Sargon's saying it, so I'm not surprised. Yeah. 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 ...of the workplace. He argues that the workplace needs to be run democratically. Of course, he clearly hasn't studied political theory, or he might have come across the Iron Law of Oligarchy, which states that all forms of organization, regardless of how democratic they may be at the start, will eventually and inevitably develop oligarchic tendencies, thus making true democracy practically and theoretically impossible, especially in large groups and complex organizations. Hierarchies have been scientifically proven to be innate within our species. Setting up a democratic workplace is totally ignoring one of the most crucial flaws in Marxism and similar communist ideologies and will inevitably lead to a workplace without stable incentives that are provided by rational market signals and other aspects of the capitalist economy. Oh, God. Whenever they start going about cap price signals, I just think, you Austrian yeah. school fucking prick, stick your fucking... Absolute fucking wank burger up your ass. It's such nonsense. They really not looking into it. Austrian school economics back in the day when it was re relevant was like nonsense. Yeah, it's bollocks. It's fucking bollocks. And uh, you, it really doesn't take a particularly um, huge uh, uh, amount of digging to find out why. It really doesn't, yeah. but you know. Yeah, okay. We have value being influenced by labor. Well, Sargon did not exactly state his support for the labor theory of value. If he did, I would probably... Okay, so Sargon in the stream said that he uh, supports uh, a labor democracy that is in favor of everyone egalitarianly, but he rejects the quote-unquote left attack to it. What? 
Okay, so basically the way in the stream how Sargon came out with it, I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember, this is basically how Sargon said it. Sargon said that workers in factories need to be uh, de like democratically organized with, uh, like, without being on the opposed of the left, quote-unquote, like in paraphrase. Like, well, as, it's, as it's only the left advocating anything of the sort, I don't see how it could. It's, that, that's the flaw. So I, I, at the time watching, I thought Sargon's uh, analysis of it was highly fallacious. Well, oh, it's you know, it seems like a lot of shit to be honest, but yeah, yeah. Brain damage with the overall girth of my face palm at such an economically illiterate statement. He did allude to. <laughs> I love the ancaps when they call someone else economically illiterate. Genius. Yep. That labor influences value, and this is absurd. Value is not created in production, but rather by the wants that the goods satisfy. It is subjective. That's ri that's ridiculous. <laughs> Like, okay, well, how about all the workers sit down, and we'll see how much value you fucking create. How about the that, workers? The workers stop going to work for a week, and we'll see how much value gets created in that week. Like, like the, the talk the, when AMCAPs and like all this like libertarian right talk about this art, like this kind of stuff, we never were taking into consideration like like the idea of like your net worth if you're already rich, so like someone like Jay Z or Beyonce. Hmm. Where, where, where they don't, where, like, where they don't have to, uh, work, like, uh, make money off of, uh, uh, like, exploitation or, or having people work for them in general. Yeah. They make money from, like, the AdSense and clicks off of their services for the internet, whatever, quote well, at least a big part of it. Yeah. Well, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the idea that, um, that uh, value only comes from wants is ridiculous because wants, um, wants unfulfilled give you give you nothing. No one's going to pay just because yeah. they want something. They have to pay for something they're going to get, which has to be yeah. created. <sighs> Years building a specific commodity, and it may be absolutely worthless to me, which is exemplary in things from art to automobiles, for example. It is extremely difficult and time-consuming to build a pickup truck uh, which I personally don't care for because it's unnecessary for my lifestyle. However, a farmer who may require one would find a pickup truck far more valuable. Additionally, prices are not determined by labor. They are determined by supply and demand, and so are wages. Learn economics, Sargon. I, I have to admit, like, even for Nick, uh, um, for his taking is really also wrong, in my view, but also Sargon on that stream was also really not on like game like when when he went on that like stream. Well was... Sargon's already showed himself to be economically illiterate in that conversation he had with Steven Crowder, if you remember, going on about yeah. spending ten percent of GDP on Oh yeah, I do remember, yeah. There wasn't that like in uh, March? I can't remember it was earlier this year, yeah. yeah. And you just you just think that's so far from what the reality is that I mean you don't you clearly have no not even the first idea of how the government as it currently stands uh, sits and so if 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 you if you don't even understand what the situation is now how can you possibly hope to have any idea of what you want it to then become yeah it's, uh, exactly no i agree but i find it very odd that sargon what i know for a fact went to a business school so like how does he get like think he can get away with this like basic crap but like well, he was obviously being suffocated by the fucking feminist system. <laughs> exactly. The fucking feminist system! Exactly. You made that sound quite punk. That was cool. When he said it, it was really, really shit, but you made that sound quite punk. That was all right. <laughs> Marx's alienation theory. Sargon also does allude to the alienation theory that workers are alienated from the products that they produce because they cannot see themselves in the product of their labor and often cannot even buy the products that they build themselves. First off, the idea that it is necessary to see yourself in the product of your labor is absurd. For example, let's say you get a job making cars. You may not love your work, but your manufacturing job enables you to accumulate wealth. With that wealth, you can enable yourself to provide whatever product or service you can to the market. But you cannot simply... Oh my god, it's... It's so atomized. Life isn't just about money. Alienation yeah. is not. It's not absolutely essential. Yes, you can get through your life. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, with whilst hating your job or whatever. But in terms of a being more productive and b being a happier, more rounded member of society, it's better if you don't feel like you're wasting fucking half of your life on a job yeah. you despise. No, no, I agree. It's, um... 
and mm -hmm. Sargon and uh, Nick's uh, um, analysis, both of them, because I've, I watched a lot of replies to Sargon, and this by far made the most sense. It was more, most on point out of all of everyone, out of like the hundreds I've watched in the last three weeks. Okay. But I'll, I would say that everyone involved in their arguments to reply and back, it's all vapid on surface, it's very uh, uh, surface level, like stuff. No, the all right being surface level, I, well, I would never knock me down with a feather. For that matter, and demand ownership of seed capital to do what you want when you haven't earned that seed capital in the first place. The world doesn't owe so you I any. All right, so I presume you're against, completely against any uh, form of um, passing your wealth down to the next generation. Inheritance. You're against inheritance then, because the people who who get that money haven't earned it. So we'd take 100% inheritance tax then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is weird. I've actually seen AMCAPs like against heritage uh, uh, taxes. Oh, of course they are, because they're basically conservatives who don't want to feel like cunts. Yeah. Like Mr. Burr. At least, at least have the honesty to, yeah. to come out and say, no, actually, we're just for the rich. Yeah. Just have the honesty to come out and say that. And I would, I would respect you more if you did. I'd still despise you, but I'd respect you more, yeah. if that makes sense. Oh, yes. Here first. Continuing, if you're able to manufacture something that you can see yourself in without needing to work for someone else to accumulate the capital for that in the first place, why not simply go ahead and do that? Furthermore, many people do not care as as much about work and uh, seeing themselves in the product of their labor merely as a thing. Uh, they see work merely as a thing to do in order to make money, to be able to worry about other things that they care about more, such as their family, friends, perhaps the less profitable activity. Yeah, and, yes. No, that's... That's fine, yeah. But the point isn't that we're not saying every single person is that way. We're saying a lot of people are that way. A lot. So essentially, essentially, you can take your straw man you're trying to beat to death there and stick it up your ass sideways. <laughs> Economic system shelved simply because they prefer to use a capitalist for their wages in exchange for work that they don't especially enjoy when there's not really a profitable way that they could do everything else alone. <laughs> Finally, it's asinine to suggest that uh, workers are, are not not being able to purchase the products of their labor is some sort of problem. Capitalist abstains from production, which is what allows the worker to have materials and a factory to work in in the first place to produce these things. Without the capitalist, the worker could not begin to labor at all. And if he could, he wouldn't have to work for the capitalist anyway. Well, I've done that's, that's nonsense, because you can have small-scale self-production... Yeah, yeah, which I was also going to rebut it from this, this angle. He's coming at, like, in Italy during, uh, from, uh, in, from 1950 to 70s, it was illegal to buy a car and port it. Everyone had to drive Fiat. Everyone had Fiat. Yeah. And, uh, and Fiat was, like, at that time, was a state-run yeah, um, organization. Yeah. And um, they, at the time, made so much money from the circulation and taxation from the fiat car and repurchasing that over time the car got better being one of the better cars on th the low uh, lower uh price range from the recycling of the keynesianistic aspect of the state owning the means of production for the fiat copyright and licensing yeah yeah I th I, actually that's a very good example yeah um another another point worth making is the historical one that the kind of large-scale um capitalist enterprise that he's talking about as if it a, as if it's the only thing that exists today which it doesn't and secondly as if it's it's a ubiquitous part of human existence no. or that it's always been around your version of capitalism the or it's not even your version the capitalism he's describing which isn't actually his capitalism anyway it's corporatism but um yeah, yeah. has only existed for the past 100 years 150 years at most so what about the other I, I, what about the other tens of thousands of years of human history exactly which this is weird. This is really interesting. A lot of AMCABs reject feudalism, but yet uh, adopt feudalistic arguments. When alt right supports feudalism but rejects feudalistic arguments. Yeah, it's almost as if they're talking out their ass. <laughs> exactly. Just, I mean, again, just a thought, lads. You know. Just, just a thought. Yeah. And finally, Sargon argues that the failure to appease the proletarian will inevitably lead to some sort of a communist revolution. Did he say? Honestly, I'm guessing he didn't say communist revolution. I'm, he yeah. might have said revolution, but I'm guessing no, he didn't he, say communist. He said communist. He, he did. did, and he was applying court. Yeah, he did. Oh, my word. Well, I am hugely surprised. Why the fuck has he said that when you don't need to? 
Exactly. Oh, yeah, because he's Ugh. a fucking knob. That's why. <laughs> How do you sit up there and spit such economic falsehoods that are spread by left-wing economically illiterate lunatics in order to gain such a reaction and then accuse me of failing to appease the proletarian by promoting a system that has led to more prosperity for the lower classes than any other in history? Incorrect. Corporatism has done that. Yeah, corporatism. Which, which, which is really weird. Um, out of everyone who replied to Sargon's video, Sargon in the comment section of this one was the most vitriolic. Out of like everyone who made uh, analysis videos and rebuttals and uh, opinions to that ridiculous hangout three weeks ago. Hmm, that's intriguing. For the poor than all government programs combined. I did leave a comment on Sargon's video imploring him to seek some sort of economic knowledge before he decides oh. to run his mouth on it. I hope that this video does find him. Oh, Van Hoyer, be Friedman. Oh, that's... Oh, right, okay. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, the same old shit. Right. <laughs> yep. Writers, textbooks, articles, and a reading list that may help him out. But, again, his torn upon Marxism. Sargon's not a Marxist, you twat. No, he's not. <laughs> Uh, I don't even think at this point Sargon's even a classic liberal. Like I, I don't know even how to like cl classify him. He like oh flip flop so much. Well, I I call him a panderer because that's what he does. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, um, I I, I recently um uh, just talked to this guy who remain nameless who like identifies as a big classical liberal. Like like bit like big in New York. He like I showed him a few Sargon quotes and videos and articles he's done. He was like he, the guy was like this guy exists. He was like like just like astounded. Oh, okay. Oh. So, yeah, it's yeah. So it's like, and I think this is gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna like finish the last twenty seconds to see if there's anything else, and then I'll, uh, we'll have like an afterthoughts of this ridiculous thing for like maybe ten minutes, and I like end it. Yeah. Sargon is economically illiterate and needs to check the facts before making arguments on things that he does not understand. As always, all my citations will be in the description. Yeah, but it seems like you you suggested he really read Van Hayek and Friedman and Saul and all the rest of it. Uh, yeah. Why bother checking your fucking sources? They're nonsense. Exactly. Um, I, I wanted to get your, like, uh, um, like, after thoughts, because like, this was by far the best video I could find of in response to that well, I think that like I think that speaks volumes about the piss poor quality of the responses. And this is the thing: I, I'm not defending um, Sargon here. I'm, not saying, You're right, I'm yeah. not saying that Sargon was right in what he was saying. But the idea that he's a Marxist is such an absurd. It just shows how far right the alt right are that they think he's a Marxist because he, yeah. he he suggested some sort of workplace organization. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, I think I am going to end this, and everyone can have a good night or afternoon. Pip, pip.